a Christmas movie begins. Whenever I get gloomy with the state of the world, I think about the arrivals gate at Heathrow Airport. Seems to me that love is everywhere. Often it's not particularly dignified or newsworthy, but it's always there. Fathers and sons, mothers and daughters, husbands and wives, boyfriends, girlfriends, old friends. If you look for it, I've got a sneaky feeling you'll find that love actually is all around. It's a little film that has become a global sensation. We've all watched Love Actually for more than 4.6 billion minutes. Audiences all over the world. A holiday favorite that keeps giving the competition a run for its money year after year after year. And people don't just watch, they rewatch and rewatch and then recreate their favorite scenes. Husband and wife. Like this one in the film, a bride and a groom are walking down the aisle. And thanks to the Beatles, a big surprise from their guests. So go online and see all the real people trying to do it too. This one. And this one. Love is all you need. And back in the movie, another famous scene, the cue card confession of love. And moving on. Now everyone does that too. Everyone. Even someone on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> And when the movie features a prime minister doing a really embarrassing dance, all of us in our living rooms try it too. When we head out to Central Park, New York and set up a camera, perfect strangers sit down and listen. The one where he goes and reveals his love using the car. I've probably watched it like nine times, if I have to say. I love the movie because it also shows young love. Finish this line. You'll find that. Love actually is all around. An action. So what is the healing heart of this film made 20 years ago? The stories that weave together laughter and surprising lessons about love. It starts with an outrageous aging rock star, Billy Mack, begging for people to make his Christmas song a number one hit, even though he knows his remake is awful. If you believe in Father Christmas like your Uncle Billy does, buy my festering <laughs> of a record. There's a little boy with a secret crush whose stepdad becomes his wingman and best friend. That inspired and awkward prime minister, a sister who teaches about the bone deep love of family a mother and wife who teaches us about holding on. So we decided to travel to London to find the people who made the film, to talk to them about love then and now. Camera's going, phone's off. We're in the offices of a film studio. Is Someone is rushing down the hall. In there, in it's here. Emma Thompson. Oh, poster for love, actually, oddly enough. I know. <laughs> You're here. We started by showing her a photo from the movie <laughs> premiere all those years ago. Oh, look. I scrubbed up all right back then. But see, I just don't make enough of an effort anymore. <laughs> That's my problem. I don't know if surprised is the word. Do you get why it's become this thing? I so do. I so get it. Yeah? Yeah, because I think that we forget. Time and time again, we forget that love is all that matters. It's all that matters. She was already an Oscar-winning star when her old friend, Richard Curtis, asked her to be part of a new movie he'd written. But he reminds us in a film that's very funny about love and it, all its messiness and, and its unexpectedness and that you'll find love in the weirdest places, you know. And ambivalent love is still love. Yes, and, and it's still love. And unrequited love, which is the most painful thing on the planet, but it's still love. He's just this, this golden heart he has. He's truly a good person in our business, and that's something that to be treasured. And she wasn't <laughs> the only big star who signed on for the movie. We're at a rooftop overlooking central London. Hello, hello. You have a huge crew. We do, because it's you. Oh, you yeah, know right. what I mean? I am important. 
Hugh Grant plays the prime minister who inconveniently falls in love with someone in his office, tries to avoid seeing her, but ends up knocking on random doors to find her. Is uh, Natalie here? The part was written especially for him by that writer-director who's also his friend. A, he is funny. That's just a black and white thing. He's funny. And B, it comes from the heart. It's true. And I did drunkenly watch a bit of Love Actually a few months ago and with my wife, and she... She was the one who said, oh, look, it's all about pain. It's all about suffering. About awkwardness and little rejections and little disappointments yes. in yourself. Yes, yeah. yes. So now we head out of London to find the writer-director Richard Curtis, whose films have created a singular language of longing inside of laughter and hope inside a broken heart. Hello. He's waiting at a little house where he writes on the seashore of Suffolk, England. Curtis, by the way, is the man who gave us the hilarity of Four Weddings and a Funeral, the comic despair of Bridget Jones' diary. And he's the one who wrote those unforgettable words in Notting Hill. I'm also just a girl standing in front of a boy asking him to love her. But his then new movie, Love Actually, with all its layered stories, was a novel idea at the time and something of a gamble. 20 years. Yeah, I know. I think the 20 years shows what a youthful optimist I probably was when I wrote it. He says he still wants to write about the surprising ways we're good to each other in a world with so many films about trauma and violence. We get thousands of films about serial killers and there's only ever been about nine of them and yet there'll be a million people falling in love feeling it's the most interesting moment of their lives good deeds inside families and good deeds inside communities if you look at what happened during covid and the extraordinary sort of bravery and heroism i do think the way to think about life is that every day has the potential in all its simplicity, just to be, just to be gorgeous. So now, look at something flickering into view. It's footage from 20 years ago. It's really lovely to have you all here. The actors gathering to read through this new and unconventional script. Faces we recognize, some about to become famous, like Kira Knightley. Thank you so much. I remember sitting down with Kira while we were shooting and saying, what are you doing next? And she's saying, oh, I don't think it's going to work. It's a pirate film and they always fail. <laughs> Another young actor will become a star on The Walking Dead. Another, The Hobbit. And another Oscar nominee, Chiwetel Ejiofor. Chiwetel's become famous. Thomas Brody Sangster, even though I don't know that people even know it's the same face. And then there's the actor who's reading the part of the insanely funny, rather dilapidated rock star. A serious stage actor, Bill Nye. Good morning. How are you? Who tells me at the time he was not someone you'd recognize on the street. They'd walk past you and they'd think, he's my dentist? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> he's my geography teacher. No. <laughs> Is he my cousin? Is he my cousin? I can't remember that thing. You know. Honestly, I'm not being coy. Uh, they could have had anyone. And uh, I, was, I was certainly not on their list. 20 years ago, he wasn't even asked to audition for the part of Billy Mack. He came to an early read-through as a kind of placeholder for the part. But watch what happens every time he takes the floor. I feel it in my finger. I feel it in my toes. He was cast on the spot. I feel it in my fingers. I feel it in my toes. Serious stage actor dressed up in skin tight pants. Including very tight lycra trousers, which is quite a lonely place to find yourself. <laughs> he steals dance moves from the pioneering rockers still trying to bring the heat in their 60s and 70s. Elvis Costello, Keith Richards. By the way, this is an R rated film. So finally, Billy Mack goes on live television with his festival of four letter words. His promise to sing nude if he gets a number one hit and an ongoing train wreck of politically incorrect truths. If I have an obituary, the headline will probably be, hey kids, don't buy drugs. Become a pop star and they give you them for free. So who knew? In the end, it will be Billy Mack, 
who reminds every one of us about the friends we take for granted, who in fact give us so much love in our lives. I love films that emphasize how remarkable people can be. It was full of love and heart and all those words that you resist perhaps, but why not, you know? Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.